Pupil data, both formal and informal, can be a powerful tool in the hands of governors. When I think of the data that we get in school nowadays, it's so much different to what we used to have. Nearly 30 years ago, uh, it used to go to a governor's meeting and you just accept of what was, you were being told without necessarily knowing what it meant. But now, we're here to ask questions of what the school is doing about it and if there's anything that we as governors can do about it also. And uh, we found it is a very satisfying situation to be in. At Rainbow Forge Primary in Sheffield, like every school in the country, pupil data is an essential element in the evaluation of its performance. But what makes this school different is how governors approach information handling. Formal data is presented imaginatively. I've got the... Um Two horse race idea again. And basically, historically with the school, our achievement is really something that's taken over from attainment, really. Our achievement's always been out in front, but our attainment is catching up. But informal data is arguably more important, and the governors gather that themselves. Miss Thurman, do you want to pick? Uh, can I have um, attendance, please? If you're there for a whole week, you'll get two raffle tickets. If you're only there for a few days in the week, you get one raffle ticket. At the end of the term, they'll do a big raffle draw and they'll give out good prizes. It seems a lot fairer than the 100 percenters because some people aren't sick on purpose. The first step in changing the school's approach to pupil data for governors was a simple one. About five years ago now, we changed from the evening meetings that we used to hold uh, where the governors never saw the school actually live, as I like to call it. They met at half past six at night. They left often in the dark. Uh, and it was a very sterile governing body. Now we have governors who meet children, governors who observe teaching, children who talk to governors, and they really do have a definite impact on the work of the school, and it's real. So it's not just figures on a piece of paper, it's kids, and it's real progress that those children are making. Right, OK, now then, the attendance. And the target for the year is 93.5%. Well, we met last week, Maureen, at an attendance panel with two pupils in mind. Mm, yes, I was, sorry, I was sorry to have missed that, yeah. yes. There were two pupils who Ali targeted. One a boy in Year 5 and another boy in Year 6 who was due to leave us, obviously, in September mm -hmm. and moved to secondary, but we still thought it was important to just flag up with parents that his attendance is crucial to his education. What's interesting is, Maureen, as soon as Ali sent the letters to the parents to yes, invite yeah. them to the panel, yes. both children's attendance was 100% since. Really? So, yeah, just bringing oh, well. that attention what to does it. it what's the power of a letter? That mm. sounds very good. The attendance at this school in the past has been a great concern to the governors. At one time, our attendance was in the late 80s, but now we're up to 94.1. By coming into schools so often and getting to know the children, it makes the information, the data that we're receiving quite often much more relevant. We know the children that he's talking about, we know the families and we know the background. Yeah. On a more positive perspective, school attendance has gone up to 94.1 per cent. That's very So good. we're now beating the uh, target we were set, we're way ahead of that. And we do promote um, uh, attendance at every single Monday assembly, as you know, because you yes, attend some of those yes, as well. Yeah. This week's attendance, are oh, we getting our target, 93.5? At the moment, we're 94.1. Big round of applause. Well done. Fantastic. That is really, really important. They've got a commitment now, our governors, that they will attend every major event in the school. So it's that informal gathering of information which is so, so important and a critical part of governance. I've got another governor now, parent governor, who attends the playgroup, so it's, it's on every Monday morning now. She's there every single Monday morning and it doubles it up as a surgery, so if there's any other parent from any other child, they know that on a Monday morning they can go and see Paula and she'll be available for a chat. How's things going? Really good, yeah. You doing playgroup still? Yeah, yeah, well, Megan starts nursery in September. So it's, it's September going. into nursery. Is she looking forward to that? Oh, yeah, she's talking about it all the time. <laughs> I'd say that one of the big pluses of all this, this openness, is that we don't get that many complaints. But I think most of our parents believe there's, a, there's, a, there's different routes
by which their, vo their voice can be heard. Does she like the craft we do and yeah. the, the song time and the story she she time? She loves the song time, yeah. yeah. Especially now it's a bit more structured. Yeah. The role of the governor, I feel, is important with collecting, especially the informal data, especially parent governors, because parents feel they can speak to governors more so than they would probably teachers, headmaster, chair of governors. They can come to me because they know and just a parent, same as they are. I have the same views, the same interests. Any concerns I feel is really important go to the meetings, the governor's meetings, they're brought up in whichever governor's meeting, focus group it needs to go to, and then those concerns are discussed. Would you prefer mornings or afternoons, if you get the choice? Mornings. It would just suit us better. That's easier. Yeah. It is very important that we get this informal data because otherwise we wouldn't know what concerns were out in the community and we wouldn't know how to do our part as governors of this school to do anything to rectify them. Would it be helpful to begin with Alongside the informal data, the governors also keep a close eye on the school's formal figures. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see you all again. I see you too. Right, summer term sit visit. This is the one where we look at progress through the year and a number of other items on the agenda as well. Mm -hmm. So over to you, Carol. I think we'll begin with uh, the standards and we'll look how the, uh, what the tracking is telling us, if that's all right. School um, improvement partners uh, are all throughout the country now. Maybe. Every meeting I've had, I've had my chair of governors at least with me. So in terms of our achievements, she, she knows that. She knows that inside out. But she couldn't put her, her hands on the data as rapidly as I could or the deputy head could. But she can give my SIP that other dimension of saying as a governor, she's seen these changes over time uh, that perhaps just on paper it doesn't show. And I wouldn't want a SIP visit without her, to be honest. We've also looked at data about yeah. the birth rate locally All right, yeah. and the numbers of children who come into our nursery, which is the lifeblood of, of the school. Yeah. And we've had some really hard, mm. challenging questions about why are we only getting 40% of our local children? And Maureen okay. is going to be trying to contact the parents prior to the making decisions about where the children... Right. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yes. How are you going to do that? I'm Maureen? going to ask the local authority if I can have a list of the uh, families who would uh, be feeding into schools uh, a year in September and see if we can uh, send them some information about our Fantastic. school. And I know that's people... really uh, proactive, mm. that. Well, this yeah. is what we need to do. Yeah. When Maureen takes part in our meetings, it's a very supportive role. Um, it's easy to feel like the governors are a critical friend, which, of course, they are. But really, our governors are very, very supportive. That They're part of the whole school team, really, in terms of moving children on and, and realising where children are at and what it is that we need to do in terms of school improvement priorities for the future. To really develop the governor's understanding of the school and the data it produces, members meet with the pupils prior to each governor's meeting. Today, the Enjoy and Achieve subcommittee is hearing from Year 6. Welcome to our Y6 presentation on how learning is fun in Year 6. The most important thing our governors can do is to listen to our children, is to meet the children. So our children really do have a voice. Our governors listen to that voice. 48. 54, 60, 66, 72. We'll remember all of these forever. Thank you very much indeed, Y6. That was absolutely fantastic. And the governors really did appreciate that presentation of how you learn and remember things about mathematics. This focus group is the Enjoy and Achieve group. And we're going to now be asking you questions of how much and how you prefer to be able to learn. Yes, at the back. In year five, all lessons were kind of boring and fruit yes at year. And when we came into year six, we've done a lot more fun and dancing and stuff like that and singing. Well, this is a new initiative that the school has taken. It's a target for the governors and for the school to have more fun in um, achieving your targets in school. I think the real data comes from the informal chats because I go into the classes in the governor's meetings and they see me as somebody's mum, not some person they don't see from one week to the next. They see me as somebody's mum who's here who they can come and speak to if they need. Would you prefer it if your teacher had a, a list up so as when you came in at the beginning of the week you would know what you was going to learn every day? Or do you like to just turn up and see what happens? Which would you prefer? Yeah, I'd like 
like to see what <coughs> happens every day because when it's just wrote on a list then you just know that it's going to happen. You like the surprise element, do you? Mm -hmm. That's good. In the past, the governors were like a secret society. The kids didn't know the faces or anything like that. Now every governor has been allocated a class. So they're always welcome to pop in any time and they're, they're given access to everything in the classroom. So the information's there, all they've got to do is open the kids' books and if there's something they don't like, they will ask the teacher what's happened there and vice versa. And we respond to the questions. Well, our class governors come in every now and then to see how we get on with our work and see how the children are doing with what's going on in the school and things. It's very nice to actually tell the governor your fault instead of well, passing it on to teachers and you know, uh, not getting your thought confused the way you originally said it. I think it's quite nice for governors to come in so, so we can like, new people come to our school with governors and I think they're quite interested. It's like giving a voice to the school as well and uh, so then they can have a think about what the children want and not just what the adults want themselves. You know, it's all right me saying a child can do this, that and other, but the governor can just question the child and the evidence is there for them to see. The more that they can know, and actually now the more I think about it, have we ever had governors that didn't go into t to classrooms? Uh, what were we thinking of? You know, how can, how can these people possibly fulfil their role without seeing and gathering that informal data and the formal data as well and putting the two together to make the informed decisions that they have to make. Armed with a wider appreciation of the data, the governors then meet to evaluate it. Right, so I've got a, a booklet for you all, if you want to just close around. Now you might notice that on the front it actually says it's looking at achievement and attainment last year for 2008. And the reason for that is because this is based on what we call the Raise Online. And that's the uh, government document that's sent out every year to look at how the school's doing in terms of attainment and achievement. We know from all our data that our children start very, very low, but we push them on. And the journey that they make is absolutely amazing. I've been in charge of assessment at this school for six years now. I've always seen it as very important to make the data very un understandable for governors. I am aware that sometimes governors can be very quiet in this area, um, and that might show a little a little bit of lack of confidence really. I produced the booklet, I've tried to make it very reader friendly if you like, very very simple, hopefully non patronising, but also tried to make sense of the acronyms because there are so many of those in teaching um, and also tried to um, put that information into PowerPoint presentations and even down to using silly things like imagery and objects even, uh, just try and show the, the difference between attainment and achievement. If you look at the picture in the top right, you've got um, two runners, and the first runner there is saying, we'll both finish the race, but I've had a lot further to travel. If um, you imagine our school being in a race with all the other schools in Sheffield, all the other schools in the country, our school, because of the nature of our children, starts off at a very low boat base level, but we're out there, we really are. And in terms of getting to the level four being Y6, maybe our children had a little bit further to run. That's the, the image I'm trying to paint there. The last officer that we had three years ago, they wouldn't have said that our governors were informed. I can't wait for them to come now because our governors are very well informed.